child is born and unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born, underline the word child is born, and underline the word son is given. Those two. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a child is given, and the garment shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Now, um, if you look at King James, he gets it right, because other versions say he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, one word. That is wrong translation. He shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sour, sour. God is good. God is good. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. We underline the word son is given. Senor, very important for what you are going to do tonight. Unto us a son is given. These two are very distinct and very powerful sentences. We will not start from there. We begin from something you understand in this Bible class, which is what? Huh? Olga, you'll all answer the wrong thing. So please. Yeah. Why are you going to the previous verse? It starts with the four. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. That tells us something was happening in Isaiah chapter 9 from the beginning. Something was cooking. God is good. Now, give me verse 5. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. What does this mean? Victor, tell us. Stop asking. That is why you are there. God is good. It says, for every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning the fuel of a fire. But again, we have another problem. What is the problem we have here? There's another four. So we have to go back. So we go to verse four. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the role of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. We have another four. What do we do now? We go back again. Now we can start. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest as men rejoice when they divide spoil. The context of this, of course, is God giving them victory. Hallelujah. The context of this is God giving them victory because the tribes you are seeing in verse 1, Zebulun, give me verse 1. These two tribes you are seeing here, where are they? Naphtali and Zebulun, these two, are in the north, and they have just been attacked by the king of Syria. So, they have just been attacked by the king of Syria. So, Isaiah's prophecy is born from this. Now, if you go to verse 3, you have multiplied the nation. Now, this is, the, this is now the prophecy coming in, about a prophecy of increase. A prophecy of increase. They have been captured by the king of Syria, okay, but there's a prophecy coming in that you're going to be multiplied. You'll increase. He'll increase not only the nation, but the joy. Fulfilling the prophecy of Abraham that he'll increase the nation. Well, that's the first one. Increase its joy, the national blessing. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Then now we go to the first four. Give me first four. For you have broken the yoke of his burden. The yoke of whose burden? You have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the road of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. God is good. He's talking to Zebulun and Naphtali. You have broken the yoke of his burden. They had a yoke, it was broken. So they are rejoicing. Why? Because the Lord has broken the yoke. I get to end up together. Good. Next verse. I like five. For every warrior son from the noise of battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. Now this is where it becomes lovely. Because the next verse is for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and the government will be upon his shoulder. 
the verse, the chapter begins by these fellows being attacked by another nation. And Isaiah is saying in verse 5 that the garments of war shall be used for fire. Translation is saying that the battle will end. Why does the battle end? Because unto us a child is given and unto us a son is born. When Jesus appears, the battle ends because Jesus guarantees victory. Hallelujah. So the appearance of Christ unto us a child is born. You must understand something here. God is great. God is great. God is good. Unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. Son, capital S. Son, capital S. H, capital. H, capital. All is in capital. Government is not in capital. Unto us, a son is given, a child is born. Mary gives birth to a child. Mary gives birth to a child. Mary gives birth to a child. The Lord gives us a son. It's a difference. You're together. Mary gave birth to a child. Unto us a child is born. Mary gives birth to a child. But this child is not a normal child. The child is given sonship. So the father gives the, the, the father gives sonship. What am I saying? If the father didn't give sonship, Mary would have given birth to, to an ordinary boy. We are together. So unto us a son is given. And you might line your son given. You line your very important for today. Now, this is an important thing because it is fulfilled in Matthew chapter 4. If you open the Bible, it's Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. You understand? Remember the gospel of Matthew. I'll really talk about the gospels a lot in this season. I'll talk about how they are translated, how they read all those things. Matthew, remember, writes the gospel specifically to the Jews. We are together. And Matthew does a lot of reference to Old Testament prophecy. Because Matthew is convincing the Jew that Christ is the Messiah that Isaiah talked about. That is Matthew's sole aim. We are together. That is Matthew. Matthew is That's why Matthew does not say God is love. Matthew has to reference Christ and the Messiah. He must build a bridge. That's why an a genealogy to show the house of Jesus everything. Now, Yosem Najua. So, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. Next verse. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Remember them now? From Isaiah 9.1? Good. He goes there. Now the next verse tells us the story. Verse 14. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, next verse, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, 16, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Give me Isaiah 9.2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. You see? God is good because at the appearance of the Messiah, at the appearance of Jesus Christ, those who are in darkness, those who are in bondage, receive light. We are together. Now, when Isaiah is writing this, he's talking about the Messiah. It's a prophecy and then bondage. When Jesus comes and goes there, he brings light to those guys in the north. Hallelujah. Because when Isaiah is telling, imagine Isaiah reading this scroll. Think about this. You have been attacked by the king of Syria. Zebulun and Naphtali, you have been attacked by the king of Syria. Isaiah comes and unleashes a scroll and begins to prophesy and says, the people who walked in darkness, you guys who walked in darkness, and I bet about Naphtali. Eh? Imagine you are Naphtali. So, can you imagine you are Naphtali? Who knows someone called Naphtali? Who knows someone called Zebulun? Mm. I don't know any Zebulun. God is good anyway. So, <laughs> Zebulun. Zebulun. 
<laughs> okay, what I'm talking about? Let's stop names. Let, let, let us stop throwing glasses. <laughs> now, imagine you are hearing this. You have just been attacked. And this person comes and says, listen, you walked in darkness. Uh, yeah, we should not get all those things you're saying there. Okay? Then he moves on to say, listen, all the war is coming to an end. The things you used for shall be burned. Because unto you a son is given. Unto your child is born, unto your son is I mean, unto you a child is born, unto your son is given. He shall be called mighty counselor. When you hear all that and you're in captivity, what is that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yo, we are there, you're almost. I'm looking for the right word. Then suddenly one another went out. What is it? What has Isaiah brought to them? What has he brought? Uh -huh. I'm out of the gospel is. Huh? Someone has heard them, isn't it? Good news. They are in captivity and he has brought them good news. That unto you a child is born. That is good news. And that is the gospel. Now to them, they are hearing good news. But to us, we know that that good news is Christ. The gospel is Jesus Christ. Because when Christ appears, light must shine. When Christ appears, the battle must end. When Christ appears, there must be a breakthrough. Because everything goes upon his shoulder. The government shall be on his shoulder. What does that mean? It means all authority shall be on him. He shall control every outcome. God is good. God is good. Now, while we are learning this today, someone have an introduction. The gospel is Jesus Christ. The gospel is Jesus Christ. Good news is Jesus. Meaning if I have Jesus, I've got good news. But, do I only want news? Do I only want news? You see, these guys receive news. Almost 800 years later is when the manifestation of the news comes. In the new covenant, Good news is now. Hallelujah. Remember the story in the Bible of this man who came and told Jesus that his son is sick to the point of death. You remember? And what did Jesus tell him? It's good we are aware. Yes. What does he say? He came, eh? What? He came? Mulisema, yes. Why are you misleading this committee? Why are you misleading the preacher? Why? Came and said, Master, my son is sick to the point of death. And Christ said, Oh, you faithless generation, you must see a sign for you to believe. He told the guy, go home. Your son lives. And the Bible says, the man believed. The man believed. And when he went home, he met the servants. And they told him, master, your son lives. And he asked them, what time was it? And they said, it was on the seventh hour. And he remembered. It was the same time that Jesus told him, your son lives. God is good. Jesus is the gospel. He has come, has spoken good news to the man. The man upon believing the good news, what happens to the good news? It manifests immediately in his life. The Bible says he believed. He believed. He didn't say anything. I said he believed the words and he went away. Didn't ask how. 
Didn't tell Jesus you didn't lay hands on him. Didn't say you didn't come on Tuesday. He didn't say that. He came understanding that if you are the gospel, if you are the good news, they said you will come with the government on your shoulder. You shall be called what? Wonderful. Meaning you'll only do wonderful things. You'll be called mighty God. Meaning there's no miracle you cannot do. Amen. You'll be the prince of peace. Eternal father. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Come with you underline you, underline you. The government shall be upon his shoulders. I'll teach that in three weeks. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Very powerful statement. Because it's important to understand that the kingdom of God operates as a kingdom op op operates. Upon whose shoulder is the authority of your life? Upon whose shoulder is the authority of your life? Very important question. Hey. Good morning. To go together. Good. Now, why does he tell this man, you faithless generation? Why does he say that? Let's move forward a bit. Another example. The disciples are hovering, praying for a guy, this young boy, who had an epileptic fit. And the disciples, Jesus comes, and this man runs to Christ and says, my son is sick. And I brought him to your fellows. And your disciples were unable to heal him. What does Christ say? Oh, you of little faith, for how long shall I be with you? Amen. He's asking them a question. He's telling them, I am the good news. When do you understand that I am the gospel? Let me bring it this way. There's the gospel, there is Jesus. Amen. When you don't I am trying to make this uh, sensible. The Bible says in Proverbs, wisdom is the principle thing. Doesn't say money, doesn't say knowledge. It says wisdom is the principal thing. But it says, above all this, with all thy effort, do what? Seek understanding. Seek what? Understanding. If I hear the gospel and I lack understanding, I'll separate the gospel and Jesus. If I have understanding, then I know Jesus is the gospel. And if I have Jesus, then there has to be a manifestation because Jesus is the gospel. He is the word. He is the good news. No miracle was done absent of a word. And Christ is the word. If the word speaks, then it must be so. Can you look at Peter? Peter 3, 15. It says, and remember, this is which version? King James, good. It says, and remember, our Lord, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. If you have a Bible, underline that. Very important text as well. But Peter, don't be in a hurry for other people to get saved. Amen. God was patient with you too. Hallelujah. Remember our Lord's patient people to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Peter is quoting Paul. Speaking of this, in all of his letters, Peter also read the letters of Paul. Hallelujah. Now if Peter read them, why not you? God is good. Story for another day. <laughs> so, it says this. Some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. Some of the comments are hard to understand and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted these letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of the scripture. God is good. God is good. We jump to verse 18. It says, rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Underline that, verse 18. 
It says, but underline it anyway. But grow in the spiritual favor of knowledge of God. You can come up with a new version and, and underline. But it says this. This is very juicy. I like this. It says, rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace and the knowledge. Grow in the grace and the knowledge. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Put your hand here. Say, Holy Spirit, I need to grow. I need to grow. Help me to grow. Amen. It says grow. Rather you must. The word here is you must. You must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ. He's saying there must be a process where you are no longer where you used to be in your walk with God. There has to be a growth. Salvation is very funny. Kwa sababu Paul anasema hivi, he says, when I was a child, I used to go where I want to go. Now that I am grown, I am being told where to go. You're seeing irony. Now that I am grown, I'm being told where I should go. But when I was a child, I went where I wanted to go. In our lives, you're in the opposite. When you are a child, you are told where to go. When you grow, you tell yourself where to go. In salvation, growth is being led by the Holy Ghost even more. Paul and Asema, grow in grace and knowledge. Grow in grace and knowledge. Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is important. But I must increase my knowledge of Christ. I must increase my knowledge of Christ. Christ is the gospel. If I don't understand Christ is the gospel, God is good, then I am not growing in my walk with God. Hallelujah. Aki please na bini mna nishika. Ama nongi araka. Nikunyo luko zeti. God is good. Are we together? Because like you were worshipping a few minutes ago and I said we are worshipping it's tactical warfare. It's tactical warfare. In John chapter 4, I think verse 22, the Lord is at the well with this lady and he tells her something very profound. He tells her, you are worshipping that which you don't know. You are worshipping that which you don't know. You are worshipping that which you don't know. Do you know it is possible that we gather like this in the name of the Lord? And some people are worshipping in reverse. Others are worshipping sideways. And others are worshipping forward. What am I saying? Sinyi si nyinyi mko hapa leo. Wala wajakuja. God is good. Are we together? Do you know it is very possible? Because he's saying, you worship what you don't know. But we know the Jews. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. We know what we worship. He's speaking to her flesh. But the next verse is when he says, I think, uh, spirit and truth. But the hour is coming, and now it is worshippers worship for the spirit and truth. He's saying that those who worship what they don't know, that it is possible that uh, Miriam can be singing a song and sing at the loudest of her voice. But Miriam has no understanding who she's worshipping. Take time and think of that. The gospel is Jesus. If the gospel is of Jesus, then there's a possibility that you can be worshipping that which you don't know. If the gospel is Jesus, then you're worshipping that which you know. And every word you lift in worship has an impact in your life. Because remember, every miracle came through a word. And the word is Christ. To not communicate. I'm an end of speed. Are we together? So the gospel is Jesus Christ. Now, I'm loading with scriptures. If by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. They shall reign in life by one Jesus. The gospel is Jesus. He said, I've come to give the good news. Now, please let us look at this. I want you to pick out for me words 
that are very powerful in this. Watch and open context. You have talked about growth. So, we have to grow. Isn't it? We have to grow in grace. We have to grow in grace. What word stands out when you read this? Wapikahawa. Huh? We're talking about growth here. Because to understand the gospel is Jesus, we must also enter into a level of growth. God is good. I'm understanding what we are learning and what we will learn will make sense today, tomorrow, as we continue. Amen. God is good. Allow it to be a seed in your life to grow. God is good. Sawa, sawa. So, people who are pressure kama leo, and are scared Mind ye not. Hallelujah. Nimbegu itamea. God is good. Because it took me almost eight, nine years of ministry to understand that Jesus is the gospel. It took me a while. Amen. So I'm basically preaching my experience of the gospel. Amen. That Christ is the gospel. Hallelujah. And so it's born from Christ is everything. Christ is enough. The good news of Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. The gospel of Christ is Christ. God is good. So you are not given just the gospel. You are given a person. Is that making sense? You are not given a God. We are given a person. But he is hidden within the text we read. Hallelujah. Now, back here. What do you see? Eh? By? By one, eh? Abundance. Miriam, you know, you will say, I'm not ignored. I was trying that you don't appear on the video. I had, I had. Eh? Huh? What? Uh -uh. That's a good one. But look about growth. Look, look at the microphone. Eh? Think about it from a point of you are growing. You are growing. If you are growing, of course, right in life, this is beautiful. But growth, where does growth come in? Huh? Huh? Receive. Receive. Because in all of this, receive is you. You decide how much you receive. That is growth. Hallelujah. God is good. He says, by one man's offense, death reigned. Death reigned. By one man's offense, death reigned. That is Jesus, Adam, has nothing to do with me. Where does growth come in there? There's no growth. God is good. You move to here. Much more they which receive abundance. If I receive, it doesn't say, remember in Isaiah we've read, and to us a son is given. And to us a son is given. What does John chapter 1 say? All those who received him were given the power to become sons of God. Those who received. Receiving is in your power. Giving is God. Receiving is you. We, let me say this in terms of faith. God has no limit to what he can give. God has no limit to what he can supply. God has no limit. What is the limit is our ability to receive. Our capacity to receive determines what we receive. What we receive is never bound by the hand of God. What we receive is bound by our own capacity. How big is our hand? Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? That God has no limit to what he can pour. God has no limit to what he releases. What the Lord knows is not. It is what you want. How do you want to receive it? That is within your power. Now, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. The more of the gift of righteousness I receive in my life, 
Meaning the more understanding I have that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the more that increases in my life, the more the power I have to reign. We are together. They are tied. Uh, my level of reigning is determined by the level I receive the abundance of grace. This is already from God. Abundance is God. It says it is a lot. God is releasing a lot. Abundance, a lot. Receiving is me. There is abundance. This is God's supply. There is always an abundance where God is. Always an overflow where God is. God never releases little. He gives a lot. So grace is abundant. Why is it abundant? It's because grace comes through Christ. Hallelujah. One of my reflections with the Holy Ghost a few years ago, when I was trying to hand someone say, a preacher say this, that if you don't know how much God loves you, you have to think about how much God loves Jesus. Very profound, isn't it? Then I sat and I thought, but Jesus, when you treat your disciples, how wonderful it is for a man, what kind of love is this for a man to lay down his life for his friends? Ask Jesus, what is the value of your life? That you are so sure that if you give your life for me, I shall have all that I need. What is the value of your life? I moved from what is the value of the life of Christ to the Father. I looked at Jesus as himself. His confidence in his own value. Hallelujah abundance. He knew himself as the prince of peace. The prince of peace. Amen. Prince of peace. Prince of shalom. Prince of wholeness. Lacking in absolutely nothing. Amen. Now understand the Bible says prince. Translation in the Hebrew. Prince is ruler. Ruler. When it says prince of this earth. Ruler. So King James says prince, but the translation is ruler. So he's the ruler of peace. He controls peace. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Therefore, if Mike wants to reign in life, the ability for Mike to reign has already been released in abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that has been released. If Mike does not grow, in grace, as we have read in Peter. If Mike doesn't grow, then Mike's capacity of receiving is tied. So, there's an expectation of greater output, but Mike has small input. God is good. God is good. In 2010, when I was praying in my house, the house that had no furniture. God is good. Amen. The house had no furniture. My nephew asked me, Uncle, where is your sitting room? Because I had no furniture. <laughs> and one of the days I was praying and pushing my limits, pushing my faith, that God, I need to grow. I need to grow. I need to grow. You're not unable to provide. I need to grow. I need to grow. And I was pushing the prayer. I was pushing the prayer and believing him for it. When I pushed and pushed, the Lord gave me a scripture. And I remember what I was praying for. I wasn't praying for a bigger house. In initially, I was praying for furniture. So I was praying for furniture. When I'm praying for furniture, I see the Lord is saying something else. Then the Lord moves me to a scripture. And the Lord tells me this in the scripture. The scripture says, expand your tents. Expand the pegs of your tents. I'm praying for furniture. He's answering me, expand the pegs of your tents. What is he telling me? He's telling me, Victor, your capacity to receive must change. Amen. So I get up and my mind changes. I think, by the way, I need to think of a house. Amen. So I go look for a two-bedroom house. I go look for it. I find a two-bedroom house. I looked at it the first time. I was overwhelmed. God is good. I a bit culture shock. I remember breathing in and breathing out before I could believe it. God is faithful anyway. I believe the Lord. He provides. I move into this house. I move in a day like today. Expand your tents. Remember? Expand your 
your turns. Seven days, I've said this testimony here, seven days later is when I receive a call and someone tells me, Victor, the Lord put it in my heart that I should furnish your house. Meet me at Galleria. And I go to Galleria. And the Lord furnished my house, microwave, fridge, oven, chairs, everything, plates, nonstick pans. I did not know what those were. <laughs> I had no idea what those things were. Hallelujah. But I took them anyway. My wife will tell you when you were getting married, the house had everything. Had everything. I gave the oven out. Story for another day. That story has wounds. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> but the truth is this. He, it was the problem was not his ability to supply. The person who God had appointed with the burden to furnish my house was already available. The resources the person required were already with the person. They were already with the person. It was my growth in the spirit to know, expand your tent. Hallelujah. The downside of this is this. Don't ignore the process you are in with the Lord. Don't expand your tent and you're going through a process that is different from expanding a tent. You might expand the wrong tent. Hallelujah! <laughs> yes. Usipia usijitu. Understand the process you are in. And the process I was in qualified me to increase my capacity capacity to receive. Now, when it comes to reigning, I must increase my capacity through the growth. The book Peter. Give me Peter one more time. How can you tell me you're learning? Are you learning something? Give me 18, verse 18. Verse 18. Let's talk in New King James. King James, King James. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow in grace and the knowledge. They are going in tandem. You are growing in grace. You are growing in knowledge. You are growing in grace. You are growing in knowledge. The more you know Christ, the more you know what Christ did for you. The more you know what Christ did for you, the more grace you receive. The more you grow, the more you reign. Hallelujah. I know we all want to reign. God is good. God is good. God is good. The gospel is Jesus. The gospel is who? It's Jesus. We need to look at Christ as the absolute solution of the things we require in our lives. We must every day ask the Lord to increase our capacity. Amen. Now, growing in knowledge is your study of scripture. Is your study of scripture. You don't grow in knowledge Hallelujah. Vice on TikTok. God is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must have a habit to interact. Give me a Bible. It's your Bible. You must have a habit to interact with Scripture. You don't grow in knowledge without interaction of Scripture. No, the Bible says, with all your effort, seek understanding. God is good. You can't understand what you don't know. So I must have a habit to interact with the gospel. Interact with the gospel. I'm reading about Jesus. I'm interacting with it. That is how I'm growing in the knowledge of my Lord Jesus. Through that knowledge, I'm able to understand the process I am in. Are we together? Because a miracle is tied to a process. There has to be a process I am in. And the location I am in the process determines the miracle that is coming. God is a God of... You cannot bypass a process. You can't. Hallelujah. It is, you cannot. I was sharing with someone in the office this week. I was saying that men are very unique creatures. 
I said, when a man jumps a stage, he always has to leave it at some point. God is good. But that's why when you're raising a son, allow him to go through every, 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 every process. If you didn't train him well, the process will eat him. If you trained him well, he will go through the process and stabilize. But you see, a guy who never had his process in his teens will have the process in his 60s. It doesn't matter. A guy, it will come back at some point. The Baba was 71. Hallelujah. Toba maskio. Na ako club. Na dance gengeton. Una zanga um zinin ba na ako apo na taka kuambiwa. Na na dance slow motion. He doesn't care. Na ako apo. Why? Because something jumped in his life. This happens more often to the, or not to the boys who took time because they were trying to take care of their siblings. They had to work hard to put the others to, through school. They had to work hard to ensure the family was standing. At some point, they should suck it. At 60, Jamal Ataka Kufanya Kutsingina Kwaifanya. Men, it catches up. At some point, in a rudingi too. It's a rudingi too. There are those who never had time maybe to spend with their moms at Amkas Gumoja at 52. Harudi kwa madhi. Nakai na mama yake tu life life. Na imeisha. Baka amali ziyo stay. Jose mtu wapo. Just think those who are raising sons. Let the boy go through the process. Amali ziyo process. Atakuwa ata soba. Atamachua. Ata Atasema ni likuwa nafanya nika wacha. Atu kimunyanganya kuwacha. God is good. Hai. Eita one. Tu hiya ringaba medaya nyuele blue. God is good. What is happening here? God is good. <laughs> Amen. Yes. At that time, if the wife is still alive, you can imagine. That's a prayer item. God is good. Now, what am I saying? With God, we don't bypass processes. Because when you talk about the gospel, I'm saying this as a footnote. When you talk about the gospel is Jesus, we shall learn over the few days a part of radically believing Christ for miracles. Amen. But the radicalness of believing Christ for miracles, the radicalness of believing Christ for breakthroughs, the radicalness of manifestation of the glory of God comes by understanding the knowledge of God, the knowledge of our Lord. Because in the knowledge of God, God helps you know where you are in your growth. And God will let you know that right now you are believing me for this, but my friend, you are not yet there. There is a level of growth you need to get into. And you need to grow into it. Everything that God provides for you, you grow into it because it was already released. You grow into it. You grow into it. Are, are we together? Nothing God provides for you exists after you. Everything that God provides for you existed before you. So you grow into it. As you grow in grace, you grow into it. You grow into financial freedom. You grow into being a, a wife. You grow into being a husband. You grow into healing. You grow into the deliverance. You grow into a new level. It was already existing. You are growing into it. The gospel is Jesus. He is the good news. At the manifestation of Christ, it means everything must change. Hallelujah. When you understand that Christ is the gospel, then things begin to change. That is why we said when we were worshiping earlier on, you are doing what? Tactful warfare. Tactful warfare. Why? The understanding of who Christ is. So when I say, I belong to you, Jesus, what is the genesis behind that statement? Someone with the revelation, help me. When I say I belong to Jesus, what is the backdrop of that statement? Based in the growth and the knowledge of God. Let's pray. Oh Lord, let us pray. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand the deep things of the Lord that I may be free. Amen.
Niulize tena. Okay. What is the backdrop of I belong to you Lord? Go back. You're, you're building on knowledge. Scripture is knowledge. So build on what you're saying. Olive, I'm not going to my class. Eh? I was bought at a price. I was bought at a price. I am not saying I just belong because I am feeling a sensation. Hallelujah. Because room, I belong to you, Lord. And because the person next to me is saying I belong to you, and they are crying, I say, okay, fine. Me too. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is, I'm saying I belong to you because I'm thinking that I was bought at a price. God is good. Now, if I was bought at a price, my kikuja, come hither. Take on the shikam corner. Ah, vilo atu kona shikana kitambo za body fight. I was bought at a at a price. Now, this is what it means. If the price had not been paid, I don't belong. So if he is Jesus, he has given his life and he has bought me. What does that mean? I am permanently joined to Christ. My belonging does not belong from my sensations. Not from my thinking. From the knowledge that I was bought at a price. The price of the Lamb of God. Jesus bought me at a price. Therefore, I belong to Jesus. So no matter where I go, this belonging brings me back. The price is greater than any bondage I face. So when death tries to belong, and I say, oh, I belong to Jesus. Are we together? When a disease comes, it wants to own me. No, I belong to Jesus. This purchase is my strength. I don't belong to Jesus. God is good. The way I can say that I'm an Arsenal fan. We are number one in the Premier League. Amen, Amen. Amen Mike. Amen. 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 Glory to God. <laughs> yes, the Lord perfect what concerns me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore. <laughs> are we together? It is a different sense of belonging because in this I have been bought at a price. Everywhere I go, this purchase pulls me back. When a disease calls me, I go, I belong to you, Lord. I remember knowledge, knowledge. I know I was bought. I read the Bible. First Peter says, I was bought not at the price of diamonds or gold or silver or things that perish. It says, I was bought by the price of the blood of the Lamb. The knowledge. I am growing in knowledge. So last week, maybe I was saying something different. Then I read the Bible, it says, I've been bought at a price. Now I'm growing in knowledge. Now I'm no longer saying that God uh, destroyed this. I'm saying, God, I belong to you. Manishika, this saves me a lot of time in prayer because there are moments in warfare when I can begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, it's the right way. I come against every yoke. I break every spirit. I come against every power. I can go through a whole... That is okay. There's no problem. But there are days when the Bible says he's the Lord God Almighty. He trains my hands for war. Growing in knowledge. He trains me for war. So today I'm coming and I'm feeling there's a battle in front of me. And I'm thinking, Lord, how do I fight? And the Holy Ghost tells me, wash it. Wash it. Lift me. I begin, hallelujah, I praise you, I exalt you, I magnify you. I go, I go, I go, I go in the spirit, giving him glory. Giving him glory. Then he whispers and says, he gives you a word, say, say you belong to me. Start saying that. I belong to you. I belong to you, Lord. Quickly, the Holy Ghost begins to work. He's now taking you out, uprooting you from every illegal place that you belong. 
because you are saying it from knowledge you are saying it from understanding you are saying it from growth there are days the Holy Ghost will tell you fold your sleeves and go to war and the days he'll tell you let's be tactful today the demon you're fighting thinks it's clever let me give you tact the basis is the scripture hallelujah hallelujah are you communicating are you getting me today or am I going too fast now I want to finish can I finish Romans 1 16 says I am not ashamed of the gospel give me Romans 1 16 I am not ashamed of the gospel hey hallelujah come on the Bible underline here underline that scripture for I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To everyone that believes. To everyone that believes. It is the power of God to everyone that does what? That believes. For, give me verse 15. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you at Rome also. Let's go to 14 to get context. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. In other words, my calling I owe. Amen? That is the basis he's saying. I am a debtor to the Greeks. Next. Now, hey, 15. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you at Rome also. Because he says, I want to come and preach. I'm in debt to preach. He says that. Then now 16, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He's saying, don't think that I'm not coming to Rome because I'm ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel. How do you not become ashamed of, of the gospel in your personal life? Number one is your ability to praise and exalt Jesus at every moment and every turn in your life. Being able to lift Jesus in everything that you go through. That's number one thing of not being ashamed of the gospel. Number two, not being afraid to say your dependence and reliance on Christ. Not ashamed to say you depend and you rely on Christ. Number three, confidently declaring that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And number four, you testify what God has done for you. You testify what God has done for you. And you testify what God will do for you. So everywhere I turn, I have to exalt Jesus. That has to be a way of life. I have to. I am at work, I have to. I am washing clothes, I have to. I am doing this. I have to always exalt Jesus in my life. He always has to be exalted. Number two, I cannot fail to say I depend on Christ. I, am, I depend on Christ. He is everything. He is my strength. He is my wisdom. He is my life. He is my food. He is my walk. He is everything. I depend on Jesus. You think I am smart, I am not smart. It is Jesus. Amen. I depend on Christ. And I'm not ashamed to say I depend on Jesus. Are we together? God is good. God is good. This is what we shall tackle on Sunday a bit. That the gospel is a fact. The gospel is a fact. The gospel is not a theory. The gospel is not a theory. The gospel is a fact. It is an irrefutable fact because Jesus came from the, he came from heaven, became a man, went on the cross, he died, he rose again, right hand of the, of the, of the Father, sent us his Holy Ghost to bear witness. That is a fact. It is not maybe Jesus died. It's not what if he died. It is a fact that the gospel is an absolute fact. It is not theology. It is not a theory. It is a fact. When the gospel becomes a fact, then the manifestation of the gospel in your life becomes a fact as well. Hallelujah. God is good. Because the first reality, the first fact 
about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is that you have to be born again. Write that down. You must be born again. I want to explain that very quickly. When Jesus is with the gospel, being born again is not a fury. God is good. I'm afraid of preaching this right now. But leave it at midnight. Being born again is not a fury. Being born again is a fact. It must be a fact. I cannot say that I was here. I encountered Jesus and I'm still here. No. One of the things that I, I know many people battle with is the transition that God does in our lives. I've said in this class, I'm not perfect. But I'm giving an example. I said this in this class before. I told Jesus, I've hung around the church for long. I've been goalkeeping in the church for a long time. God is good. Told God I've been hanging around for a while. By the time I was 12, I had read the entire Bible. I was hanging around church for a long time. When it came to the place of giving my life to Jesus, I told him, let's understand a few things. I have to see the tangible manifestation of who you are in my life. It must be tangible. I am not going to worship a God who is not real. I am not going to lift my voice to a God who is not real. I don't want a God of theory. I want a God of fact. I want when I lift my voice in worship, I can know you are there. I can see you are there. And your presence becomes more real to me. Amen. Than this chair before me. Than Miriam before me. Than Mike before me. So just, you must be more real in my life. If you won't be that real in my life, then I was okay the way I was. The gospel is a fact. Amen. I told him, if I'm being born again, then there has to be a transition in my life. Things that were with me when I was not with you have to fall away. Am I talking to somebody? I told him, you have to be tangible. I'm not going to worship a God who's not real. I'm not going to do church. Hallelujah. I am not going to do church. go through motions. Because that makes me a moving target. I'm masquerading. Hallelujah. God is good. They knew when you are born again, that is a fact. It must be a fact. The problem is that with us, because the gospel is not Jesus. Being born again is not a fact. Being born again is a theory. Hallelujah. Can I throw a glass house? Because I live in a stone. God is good. Eh? You know, when you come to Jesus, you say, you know what, Lord? Me, I have come. And I have had this issue in my life. Because the first area of being born again is inside. The first miracle of your life is not what God does on the outside. It's not the physical healing you get. The first real miracle in your life that you've been born again is what happens in your inside. If the inside has not changed, then Christ has not touched. Nemokuja speed. Eh? Yeah. It makes no sense. That mumbia kuhafa na inu wa mikono na piga nduru and at home the children are saying, mom is a terrorist. See where we Hallelujah. Just think. The other one, there's another one who watches online. <laughs> eh, are we together? But mom is a terrorist. Being born again means that when Miriam was here, Miriam had a gift of speaking in other tongues. God is good. Not tongues of the spirit. But being born again is in Afrika Mahali, Miriam's tongue can no longer speak the same things. The tongue is not where it used to be because the new birth is a fact. It is what? It is what? It is what? It is a fact. 
If the new birth becomes a fact, remember the Bible says, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. You bet John 3.16. For God so loved the world. I want to finish. God willing. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. There. For God so loved the world that he gives only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Should not perish. Underline that, come on here, underline here. Should not perish. That is a decree. God is not giving a promise. He is giving a fact. Hallelujah. He is not giving a promise. He is giving what? A fact. You shall not perish. That is a fact. He loved the world, gave his son. Whoever believes gets born again. If you get born again, you shall not perish. That is a fact. There's no theory there. That is a fact. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, what is 2 Corinthians? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When I am, I know Christ is the gospel and I encounter Christ, I tell Christ every day, do something that is new in my life. The old must go away. The old must go away. I want something new in my life. The old must go. The old must fade away. I said last week on Sunday that the devil knew you with particular patterns. But now you are born again. The devil comes and pokes and you don't turn because you are a new creature. Hallelujah. You are a new creature. The devil knows. God is good. There's a man I know, good friend of mine, used to work at Prime, Imperial Bank. This guy, when he got born again, I met him after he was born again, carried me in his car. We are going with him in his car, we are driving down, and he used to stay in uh, Rongai, and I used to stay in Rongai, so we'd go together. And every time we passed anywhere, he would slow down, people would pass. And he'd whistle and continue. And drive, continue talking. And I want to die, okay. So he cut me like five times. So one time I told him, see you hoot at that guy. I told him, Victor, I removed the horn from my car. I asked him why. He said, before I was born again, I used to have road rage. I'd always hoot and shout at people and curse at people and insult them. One day, I insulted someone and I was going to preach. And I found her sitting at the front. Imagine you have a lot of people who are living in the world. You have a lot Let us welcome the man to preach. You have a Pray! Hey! Oh, hallelujah! Yeah! And I said, I'm going to remove the door. I'm going to remove the door. And in the road, I go. And I whistle. I say, ah, ah, I am, I am a new creature. I can't have the same temper I used to have when I was in the world. I can't have that temper anymore. Amen. That guy challenged me. He challenged me. Amen. He challenged those of you who know me. I drive very fast, but I, but I, but I don't hoot. Mr. Kanana, but ngombe mbuzi no. Just in case you see my video preaching. God is good. Are we, are we together? I don't. And I know personally, I'd say for myself, I know I had serious anger issues. When I was a child, I once took a panga to try and finish my sister. God is good. Yes, I know. And in, when I came, Lord, I was like, no. No, it's not her I wanted to kill. It's the other one. It's the other one, not under the kill. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other one, not under. God is good. Yeah. And my brother had to tackle me. And I used to have a problem because whenever I got to a place, I'd have a raging fit. But you're born again. You're born again. The old must go. You're a new creature. 
old things have passed away. It is very remarkable that we want new miracles with old attitudes. We want new miracles with old attitudes. I know I've thrown a glass house and I live in a stone. But we are now moving. You have matured in this class. Now we are moving to serious, mature things. Send you Gladwell. Are we together? On Sunday, I'm to tell you a story. Can't tell you today because of time. God is good. The old is gone. The old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. All means all. It means the financial problems I had become old. But I say this. I have to have new attitude. I have to have a new heart. I have to have a new mind. It makes no sense to believe God for a mansion, a seven-bedroom mansion, but you still walk proudly telling people, Mimi na kwanga na I believe God for a big house. Old attitude, new blessings. The Lord goes for the heart first. The Lord works from the inside out. I'm not saying that God will not bless you. I'm just saying that God will invest in you by teaching you to be better. Am I, are we, are we making sense? God doesn't judge you, but God loves you so much to invest in you and invest in your character. God is good. I can when you buy leo. Baby, please smile at me for the sake of, I just feel nice. God is good. Hallelujah. First John, we pray with this. First John 5. First John 5, 11. This is where we are praying from. And this is the record. God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. This is the record. God has given to us eternal life and this is the life in his son. It becomes beautiful. Next verse. He that has the son has life and he that has not the son has not life. Isaiah, don't go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. He that has the son has life. Unto us the son is given. He that has the son has life. Am I making sense? The son has been given. Do you have the son? Good. Next verse. Oh. These things I have written unto you that you believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Next verse. And in this confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If you have a Bible, underline that. If you have the Son, the gospel is Jesus. If I have Jesus, everything I ask in his name, anything I ask, he hears. Because remember, you might ask me a question, how do I know the will of God? I know the will of God in a very simple way, by growing in grace and the knowledge of God. By growing in grace and the knowledge of God. It is in this confidence that we have in him that if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. In verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desired of him. If we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. In other words, we know but we have received that which we have desired from him. Because I know that he hears me, whatever I ask, then I know I have received that which I had asked of him. The gospel is Jesus. 
when you have Jesus in your life, you have an answered prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you praying for tonight? I don't know what you're praying for tonight. Sunday will pick up from there. Don't worry. And let me tell you a story. But what are you praying for tonight? What are you praying for tonight? We have confidence that he hears us. We are new creatures. It is a fact. Whatever disqualified you before cannot disqualify you now because you are a new creature. Whatever blocked you then cannot block you now because you are a new creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want us to pray. I want us just to begin to magnify the Lord here tonight. I want us just to begin to lift him up and give him exaltation in this place. The gospel is Jesus Christ. The gospel is Christ. He is the good news. He is the gospel. And I want us just to begin to lift him up tonight knowing that whatever petition you've come in with here tonight, when you have Jesus, you have the desired answer with you. And we are pushing in, just lifting the Lord, trusting that we receive this answer. Lord, I exalt you and I worship you. I lift you, I adore you, I praise you. You are my Lord, my one true friend. You are my Lord, my rock, my fortress, my strong tower. I exalt you, Father, above all things, above all thrones. Father, you are great in all things. Lord Jesus, I just want to magnify you. I just want to lift you and exalt you. I just want to praise you and to adore you. I want to declare you, Almighty God, mighty. I want to declare you, God, king. I want to declare you, Lord, strong in my life. I want to exalt you, Lord. Because, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the knowledge of you, Lord, is where I get all that I need. I magnify you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I lift you, Lord Jesus. I exalt you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you, Lord Jesus. You are the gospel. You are the good news. You are the word manifest. You are the strength of God manifest. You are the love of God manifest. You are the peace of God manifest. You are the wonder of God manifest. Oh, hallelujah. I lift you, my God, my King. I exalt you, Father. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt you, Savior. I exalt you, Redeemer. I just want to magnify my Lord. Magnify my King. I exalt the one true and living God. I bless your name, O oh Lord. I lift you, O oh living God. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Receive my praise tonight. Receive my praise, Lord Jesus. Receive my praise, Lord Jesus. I just worship you. I worship you with understanding. With understanding of who you are. An understanding of what you have done. Understanding of what you have done, Father. Where you have brought me. The price you paid. I'm worshiping you, Lord, with understanding. I exalt you, Lord, because truly I came with nothing. And Lord, all that I have is because of your goodness. I worship you tonight. I lift you tonight. I exalt you tonight. I magnify you tonight. I want to join the choirs of angels to lift you up, to bless your name, to exalt your name, to praise your name, to pour upon your name that which is new. I magnify you, my Lord and my King. I praise you, my Father, my Lord, my friend. I exalt exalt you Lord may you be exalted in my life may you receive glory in my life may you receive honor in my life may you receive adoration in my life may you receive almighty father that which is due to you I thank you Lord for Jesus I thank you father for Jesus I thank you father for Jesus I thank you father for Jesus I thank you for Jesus I thank you for Jesus I thank you for Jesus that I have a chance because of Jesus I have a way because of Jesus. I have a solution because of Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. Where would I be had it not been for Jesus? Who would I be had it not been for Jesus? 
I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. I know my life would not have meaning had Jesus not taken time to die for me. I know I wouldn't be who I am today had Jesus not stood in the gap for me. I thank you for Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of my Lord Jesus. I exalt you no matter where I am, no matter where I'm standing, no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through. You are worthy of all praise in my life, worthy of all exaltation. You are my Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for choosing to die for me. I thank you, Jesus, for choosing to die for me. I thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice on Calvary. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done in my life. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, my Lord and King. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood speaks over my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you bought me at a price, the price of your life, the price of your life. I thank you, Jesus, for purchasing my life. I lift you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you, Lord. I lift you, Lord Jesus. I lift you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I lift you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, 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 You are worthy, Lord. 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 You are worthy, Lord.
Jesus, you are for you. Oh, Lady, Tony, you're the Lord. Oh, Lady, you are for you, Lord. You are for you, Lord. Hey, you are for you, Lord. 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 Oni ara ra ma gara ni ere bo ra shandari ere kara ni ere ra ma gara ra na oh you are the Lord in my life Lord you are worthy oh Lord oh you are worthy my King you are worthy my Lord oh Father you are worthy oni ere ra 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 ra. Daniele va, Daniele re, Daniele va, cara la 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 la. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. Hey, you are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. Jesus, you are worthy. Hey, you are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Rabarabaniere, rakaraniere, manabo, rana rakere ma, reshandere bariere ma, karabaraniere, niere mananiere ba zakaniere bos, niya na namo, hey, wafi, wafi lo, wafi lo Jesus. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, oh, the banana, the elephant. Hey, oh Lord, my God, Lord, you're worthy. Lord Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy are you, oh Lord. Rabara kana the elephant, sandara, Lamb of God. You are worthy, oh dear, dear man, can I dear, dear? Oh, 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 Lord, you are worthy, Rama, Rama, dear, 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 oh dear, 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 You are the Lord. You are the Lord in my life. I declare you worthy. I express, our Father, you're worthy to me. You're worthy, Lord. I want to lift you up. I want to exalt you tonight. I want to praise you, O Lord. Give you honor. What you do in my life. What you've done, O Lord. Hey. It's personal here. Your revelation of Jesus. Your revelation of Jesus. Your revelation of Christ. Your knowledge of Christ. That is the anchor. That is the anchor right now. Your knowledge of Jesus. Every miracle you've done. Every time you've intervened in my life. Every step of the way, Lord, Rabba Sanda Radiba, Karama Sandiri Arara. I want to give you glory. I want to exalt you and praise you. I want to magnify you, Father. Every moment that you stepped into my life, every time, Father, you reached out and pulled me out. Every time, time and time again, 
He has to be worthy to you. He has to be worthy. He has to be worthy. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. The gospel is Jesus Christ. Oh, hey. He's here right now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Your personal testimony should provoke your exaltation. <laughs> 